We're going to take a look at this. This is a new medieval MMO. This 24-7 persistent war game lets thousands of players build their own empire. This is apparently about a game that is made by the same people who made Foxhole, if you're familiar with that. So let's go ahead and check this out. This is by Moy Dog, I guess. I don't know how to say that first part, but let's go ahead and Moidog watch here. this. And today we've got an exciting announcement from the developers of Foxhole. Anvil Empires will be the next large scale 24 7 persistent war MMO, and it's set in medieval times. I'm a big fan of medieval. Medieval sounds really fun for that. Like Foxhole with the guns made it a little bit less fun. Siege I didn't play it, but I saw it. Trailer, and throughout it, you see what looks like small villages and bands of soldiers marching around. And I'm not going to lie. It looks a little bit like an RTS at this point. That yeah, it looks like those are NPCs. Like Foxhole was all actual players. This one looks like it's going to have NPCs doing stuff, though. It is until they turn on the names and you see that every single person in game is a real player. No shot. No shot. Those are real players, dude. No Fair. way. That thousands of people have to come together to build fortifications. To There's no way. Like, like, they definitely did that for the trail. In real life, no way you're getting those mofos to walk in a formation like that. Never can you get real people to do that. They always, they're always dicking around and running around. You try, like, even if you're, like, threatening, we're going to kick you out of the guild, they still do it and they just get kicked out. It's impossible to get that many people to actually do that. Lands and especially organize themselves into... Drop table users, dominating factor, Jacob Thromper. Oh my god, the quality's so bad, I can't, I can't quite read them all, but... Chopper 2048. Larger organized military unit. Look at that, we got Miner 1024, T-King Smeckles. As someone that has put over 2,500 hours into Foxhole... This man's put 2,500 hours into Foxhole! Jesus! Also, look at... No way, how... Like, there's gotta be... They better have a way to, like, auto get in formation and these people are having this happen by hitting a button and letting the game put them in a formation no shot you're getting people into that perfect of a formation without like paying them real life money that it just never happens it's so hard people are like little squirrels man you just can't get them to stand still i know i'm not the only one who thought what if we had this but instead of tanks and bunkers we instead had knights and catapults and castles in addition to this extremely hype trailer, a brand new development blog was also released. And here we can find a lot more information on what we should actually expect from the game. Between Ooh, so that's going to be the map. How do you cross? Do you actually, is is going to be naval warfare? Bro, naval warfare in a game like this? That'd be nuts. The trailer, the dev blog, and some digging on both the new subreddit and the official Discord. I'll be going over everything we know now about Anvil Empires. First I'm off, down. Anvil intends to have wars that last, quote unquote, weeks at a time. I don't want to stop when you look Anvil at Empires. these First horses. Off, Anvil so these horses. Remember, those are each players. Imagine what it would feel like to be one of those dudes about to run into that. Although, I have a feeling you're not actually going to see people formation like... Maybe, maybe like I said, there's got to be like an auto-formation thing. If there's not like an auto-formation, there's no shot. That last no shot you're people to come like this. Time. And based on dev chats regarding how the recent Foxhole Wars have gone, it appears that the sweet spot for wars is anywhere between 3 to 5 weeks, or 21 to 35 days. Speaking Sounds from good. experience, any longer than that, and the wars kind of lose their magic. Any shorter, and it really felt like you just couldn't get invested, or it was more of a stomp on either side. Just like Foxhole, the draw for Anvil is that you're just a small, insignificant cog in this giant war machine. That is one of the best concepts in video games. I know some people don't like that. There's some people who want to be like the hero, but I feel like a sizable percent, maybe even a majority of players, whether they know it or not, they absolutely love it when they are just participating in a greater thing. I know I love it. I think it's the greatest thing ever when I'm not significant. That's one thing that made Mountain Blade one of the best games ever. Because while you do have an impact, if there's six guys swarming you, you're dead. Like, no matter what, basically. There's nothing you can do. Just like real, like not, I mean, real life, actually. If you're well-trained and they're not well-trained, you have a sword. Yeah, maybe you can like six of you want. Apparently knights were trained to like six of you want or something back in the day against un like untrained soldiers. I don't, I've read that somewhere once, like medieval times, but... I don't know. Either way, though, that is one of the most fun things in video games is when you're taking part in something that's greater than yourself. That's like what everybody wants in a video game. Not everybody. That's what a ton of people want in a video game. So whether you're maintaining villages, organizing logistics, or fighting in the front, the devs make it clear that the conflict itself is fully driven by player action. Also, are we going to be able to... Are there players who can just be like, I don't want to even be in this war. I'm going to be a farmer. And they're just going to be sitting there farming like 24 hours a day, just like tending the field and just 
selling grain or is it just is there i wonder how much focus here is going to be exclusively on combat or if you can just like build a house and a farm and just farm for some reason or have some purpose in doing that there are no safe zones and no artificial barriers to pvp however where anvil seems to differ from foxhole is the emphasis on the empire building from the blog, it appears that very few or potentially no towns or settlements may be present in most of the world, known as Caligo. As we can see on the map, Caligo is more or less broken up into two distinct islands, north and south, which should indicate that there will be a naval aspect to the game as well. Exactly. In the description of Caligo, the devs write, This isolated continent holds an array of deadly creatures and bountiful features. Deadly creatures? Are we going to fight a kraken or something, bro? What? From craggy highlands to swaths of verdant fields, North Austria's dense forests unfurl into the murky mires of Lissinger. The northern mountains of Ettenwell are frigid and unforgiving, while the southern islands are home to barren land and fertile soil alike. Are they going to have a temperature system? Like when you're in the cold, if you, do you have to be like dressed for it? Dark I wonder. secrets lie hidden inside Caligo's primeval mountains, beneath its abyssal seas, and between grains of the very soil itself. Tread carefully, for this land may not be so easy to conquer. First off, I absolutely love the lore behind this, and from this small description, we can actually assume a lot of the following. Weather will be implemented, and certain areas like the mountains will be really cold. Additionally, farming will be required, as some soil is barren while others on the map are extremely fertile do we have to eat are we gonna like die if we don't eat hunting or even defending yourself from creatures will occur so all the combat in game won't just be against other players but the environment as well this is awesome since as much fun as okay. i had in foxhole it's more of a modern era game meaning you're not necessarily fighting against the world as much as you would in medieval times the fact that you could potentially have to claim territory and then pick up your entire settlement to move to more fertile lands is actually extremely intriguing and most likely the first actual conflicts in this game will be all about those initial land grabs in order to just sustain your settlement. Settlements are all completely player made, and although we can see what looks like castles on the map itself of Caligo, these are what players can actually build. These settlements will most likely require resource gathering for your basic materials. I wonder how long it's going to take to build one of those, because if it takes too long, it's not going to be fun for most players. But then again, Foxhole is a very niche game for a very niche type of, not, not sort of a niche type of player. But there's definitely limitations on what type of player will, will commit to something like Foxhole. So it makes me wonder what are the times like if it's going to take like six hours or more to build one of these settlements. Whew, there's only a certain genre of players that are, that are going to handle that type of gameplay and enjoy it. From the video, we can see players carrying massive logs, stones, and potentially even hay bales. If it's anything like Foxhole, certain material can only be gathered with certain technology. And in this time lapse, we see the small village grow into one with walls, farmland, and even roads, to a decently sized stone walled fort with defensive positions. And although you initially see players manually carrying items, soon we see horse drawn carriages, and maybe even a type of person. I like how that middle one, you see that middle one, bro? He's got like one rock. He's got one rock in his trailer thing. No wheelbarrow. From the official Discord, things like markets can supposedly be built for trading and commerce, and animal farming currently includes horses and chickens, but donkeys, mules, and other animals are currently in the works. It's gonna be fun, man. We, we can be ranchers. They also mention examples of crops, including wheat and produce. Now, we don't know anything else regarding what you can actually make in these I settlements, see a but on the game's new subreddit, players are already discussing things like bread and fish suggesting you could potentially fish to sustain yourself if you live in a place where farming really isn't that viable. Now, when it comes to combat, the devs really haven't confirmed much in the blog, but from the video, we can see swords and shields, spears, axes, horsemen, bows, and even a siege weapon. There are also images of players burning down straw huts and a group charging out of a forest with swords in one hand and torches in the other, which suggests that we'll be able to customize a lot of what we actually want to carry into battle. Additionally, despite not Sounds seeing good to any me. real combat in the trailer, the devs have clarified what combat should look like from a post on the official Discord. This post clarifies that you will have a quote-unquote combat mode, which restricts your movement since early tests would have players simply sprinting at people, hitting them, and then quickly sprinting away. Making uh. it not so much combat, but instead a repeated hit and run sprint fest. The devs state that sprinting will be used to help close distances in initial combat, but once you start fighting, it will actually be very hard to disengage and to further in. I was gonna say, um, when the next step was adding in a basic mechanic to make players actually group together, we added in a shield wall mechanic where players holding their shields up and standing next to each other will have a stronger guard. At the end of the day, the goal is to make combat strategic and not Twitch based, so logistics slash group formations, etc., are far more important than your aim or the timing of your attack. 
As I mentioned above, the current version of combat is functional but unpolished. It's also missing a lot of depth that we intend to add in the future. As an example, Foxhole's first version of combat didn't have weapon stability or cover. Anvil combat is at a similar stage now, but I'd argue even more primitive. So that's why I thought there are going to be like formation mechanics. So it's going to be interesting though. I wonder how much more how much more or less or the same fun it'll be if there's less skill involved in the combat and it's more about strategy and working together. It could go, I don't know, we'll see. We'll just have to see how it feels. Encourage players grouping together and fighting like you would in medieval times. There's a shield wall mechanic which actually improves defenses of those who stand close together with their shields up. Because of this, aim and accuracy of the individual is far less important than that of the group's organization. And this will encourage strategic combat, rewarding those who have better logistics, better groups, and more organized formations. In saying this, everything can and most likely will be changed in some fashion since the game is currently in a pre-alpha state, so don't expect everything to be fluid just yet. Either way, this initial design philosophy is awesome to hear since the design decision to focus on groups and formations is much more in line with how battles of the past were fought. Obviously, skill of the individual is important, but you can't do anything unless you have a group behind it. Is it important though? I feel like in this game it won't be, although maybe like using a crossbow or a bow or something. We'll just have to see. We'll just have to see what the combat actually ends up looking like and whenever this finally gets more news. And this will facilitate players into creating alliances and working together much more than they might in Foxhole. Knowing all this, the big question still is how many people can actually fight in a battle? Well, whereas Foxhole limits you to 100 players per side in one zone, Anvil is supposed to let you fight in a battle with a thousand players. Jesus Christ, a thousand players are, oh my God. I mean, I could see it. If they reduce the skill, they can reduce the server load. Like one foxhole and you have to like, someone shoots a bullet, you have to do line traces. You have to do all the like, you know, calculations and ship it back and forth, send it to everybody. Nearby. If they simplify the combat, make it less skill-based, then there'll be less calculations for the server to do. Do that plus any, you know, things that they've learned over the years, how to optimize it more. And then I can see them, I can see how they squeeze by with way more players. With many thousands more supported throughout the persistent world. This is all managed through a completely custom server engine developed called R2, which was created from the ground up with the sole reason to support games like Anvil Empires. Dude, that is actually so awesome. It's so, it's such a breath of fresh air to see a brand new game engine made specifically for a niche thing. Like back in the 90s and two, early 2000s, Every video game you played was they in order to make like an actual game like Halo or something, they had to make the game engine and then they had to build the game off of the game engine that they made for it. That was like normal. That was what everybody did. So now it's like everyone's always like, oh, we'll just use Unreal. We'll just use Unreal. We're Unity, Unity, Unreal, Unity. And there's like a few others that people use. To see someone actually make a game engine specific for the purpose of what it's meant for makes a game so much better if they do it right it's, it's really cool years ago the devs had the battle of red river technical demo for r2 which was tested with a thousand players in one battle and although it may look a little primitive due to it just being a test we can see a scale of a battle that far exceeds anything in foxhole and it actually looks more in line with games like total war which is kind of mind-blowing since that is a large-scale rts dude that looks so fun to participate in right there I love, like, I miss playing, there's a small little niche game called Fantasy or Zero that was 50 on 50. It was a very skill-based game, though. But just being able to blend into that and just do your part is so much fun. Like, it's so test, cool. We can also guess that maybe as the Anvil War progresses, technology could get as advanced as muskets and cannons, which would be absolutely amazing in-game. But once again, this is simply a guess. I love how those now, people are like stuck, like stuck by that awesome, cart. There has been no real announcement on who you can actually fight as from the official devs. But on the subreddit, we can see that there are three different factions. These are the pagans, the ancient. Let's see. The remnant for Amira, the vast Novan kingdom has endured with our cities in ruin, our empire routed. We are now looking to survive. The ancients, bones of our forefathers shaped the lands. The Calico pray to your gods and hope they hear you. The pagans. It's so great. I can barely read it. Forged in the fright. Something northern waters of the ways and the seas and the redmen the pagans appear to be a sort oh, there we of go. viking faction with I, I miss oh my god emphasizing sailing ancients read to me a bit more like the older germanic tribes and the remnant are from yeah. a fallen ruined empire most likely heavily influenced from rome suggesting they wish to reclaim what has been taken from them so like vikings and then the old guard type vibe and then um yeah like i said romans or i think of um 
the Northern Kingdom. Was that what it was called? Or Southern and Northern Kingdom in Bannerlord? The fact that we have three factions instead of two is already a huge divergence from Foxhole, which has Colonials and Wardens, meaning that you could potentially end up in situations where false alliances are made in order to take out the greater of two evils right now. I'm curious that sounds how fun. I always had one more phone at the, the triangle system. The three-part system was always better than a two-part. Three-part always, always, always have been better. Or more. Like, when I played Fantasy Zero, I think there were five. It was so much fun. People would, I'll, like, work together and then betray each other constantly. It was so much fun. Wars or ages, as they're technically called, can be won, since in Foxhole, you have to capture a certain amount of victory point cities. I would assume things like territorial claims through sediment flags or something like that may be a way to establish who owns what in the world. I've included links to everything I've sourced in the description below, including this Reddit post, so if you want to read the descriptions further, feel free to please check them out. But I am extremely excited to see where this all goes. As I mentioned previously, Anvil Empires is in pre-alpha and if oh god pre-alpha might be a while then I hope it comes out by the end of the year this will be a fun thing to play for a while would like to take a part in the open testing it will be available starting in April despite the game itself having an unknown release date wait open testing in April with I'll it having an that. official store page and wish list option on Steam I would guess that within the next year or so we may be moving Oh, well, you can see it's 2,500, <clears throat> 2,570 hours on record. Foxhole, man, this guy. Moving into a Damn, that's and nuts. And officially purchasing an early access version of the game, which should be awesome. But what do you guys think? Excited about the R2 engine and battling with thousands of players at one time? Yeah, I'm or down. maybe you're more interested in running a thriving settlement you built from the ground up? Let me know in the comments below. I'm down if for you that too. The video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. All right, well... That's that looks that looks super fun, man. Like it's it's, it's a certain type of player that enjoys these types of games. Cause I know there's some players where all they want to do is shooter games. Some players all they want to do is like grand strategy or something. But there's certain players, and I'm one of them. I love blending into a bigger thing and just being one gear in part of a larger machine. It's always such a good time. I love that. The most like some people want to be the leader, be everyone look at me, look at me. But some people like me, man. I just I just want to participate and have fun. I want someone else to make all the decisions, man. I'm too lazy. I don't want to do it. I, oh, man. Like I can, I don't want to let someone else do it. I'll, I'll do my part. I'll do good. Chill. And, and we're good. And well, fun. And I'll like, you know, be a good time. We'll all hang out. Be nice to each other. Have a good time. That's what it's going to be. Like, that's, that's super fun. I can't wait for that thousand on a thousand battles. I, I was an addict when I was younger, always wanting to find whatever game had the biggest battles. And that's why I love total war games. Just because even though it wasn't players, it was still just like, yeah, you get you know, a thousand of my soldiers against a thousand soldiers. This is great, you know. Um, do I do have it be all players and be able to do that? That's like this is literally my twelve year old self is just like, yes, dude, yes, this is it, man. This is the game. This is gonna be so. Although realistically, I don't know how long I'd actually play it when it comes out. But whenever it comes out, I'll probably cover it because this is actually gonna be really fun. I mean, I'll definitely play it. Like, it looks really, really fun. I'm actually super excited for this. Uh, so. This was a new medieval MMO. This 24-7% war game lets thousands of players build their own empire by Moidog. I'll link this in the description if you want to go check it out. Give them a like, subscribe, help them out or something like that. Uh, but yeah, dude, that looks awesome. I am super excited for this game.